Hi, I'm Nick van der Krieg from Building Point Australia and welcome to this presentation on Ideostatica where I'll develop a steel knee connection typically used in moment frames or portal frames. I'll set up the loading, set the analysis running and work through a number of the results. Ideostatica is a dedicated finite element application for steel connections and the fact that it's a dedicated FE tool is very important. So there's lots of things that are very convenient, very practical for the structural engineer looking to prepare checks or designs of steel connections on a daily basis. And the headline feature of this software is shown here. It can deal with general geometry and loading. So the members that come in to form the connection, there's virtually no limit on the number of those members, the nature of their cross section. You can pick from many libraries of open sections, universal sections, channels, angles, and so on, hollow sections, standard libraries again, uh, or you can create your own shapes of th these types or any other shape. So you can, in fact, use a table of coordinates to define the, uh, the, the midpoints uh, around your cross section and define the thickness of the plate and uh, the, the radius uh, of the elements that uh, make up that cross section. Or you can do that also with a DXF file. So it's very general in that sense, and these members can be of any standard grade or um, any grade that you care to define. And similarly with plates and welds, bolts and anchors and concrete footings, uh, the software is very general in terms of the arrangement that you can create uh, to model the connection that uh, you need to uh, set up uh, in the software. And loading, again, very general. We have uh, three axes, of course, so we can have axial force, tension or compression longitudinally along the member. We can have shear in the major and minor axes uh, directions, and uh, we can also have moment about all three axes. So it's perfectly general in, in terms of loading. And uh, this loading can be to all members and you can have as many design combinations to run uh, on the model as you like. And analysis and design checks, again, very general, lots of options. Uh, we can select at the outset of modeling the connection from a range of standards. So Eurocode, American codes, Canadian, Chinese, Russian, Hong Kong, Indian. And importantly for us in Australia, you can select Australian standards. And in that case, we'll get design checks to AS4100 and other Australian references for concrete footings and anchors. And we get a complete solution. So there's no more guesswork. All of these members, whatever their nature, similarly with components, and all of these loads are fully considered in the analysis and in the behavior and in the design checks. And the software goes about this by using a combination of first principles and a codified or clause referenced uh, approach. And uh, we'll have a look at those details when we uh, assess the results. Okay, uh, the connection that I'm going to set up is shown here in a sense. I've got a very simple rigid frame, two columns, 800WB192, a beam 610125 standard grades uh, with a UDL load and with this setup I have 399 kilonewtons downward shear and I also have a major axis moment in this rafter shown here of 717 kilonewton meters at the node and this has been set up actually uh, including consideration of the column size to give me 554 kilonewton meters at the face of the column. So this corresponds to some previously published results. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. But uh, what we have in the software is this uh, assumption of uniform shear, the shear that's applied, and therefore linear variation of moment within this uh, short zone from the node to the face of the column or uh, a little bit further perhaps as well. So like I mentioned, this uh, setup corresponds to a particular member from Australian Steel Institute tables published in 2009 using empirical models to uh, check various aspects of the connection. And this table says for 610UB125, full 
penetration butt weld to the flanges and to the ends, the vertical ends of the stiffeners. Some other fillet welds in the connection as well. Uh, 250 wide by 25 thick end plate grade, 250 plate grade, and some other details. This table says that we can have 554 kilonewton meters moment, hogging or sagging, along with 399 kilonewton shear. Uh, the direction doesn't matter in these tables. The tables also say that uh, we can have, uh, in this case too, uh, an angle within 10 degrees plus or minus and uh, some axial force up to about 200 kilonewtons uh, plus or minus. And we can have a lesser moment and a lesser shear uh, corresponding to uh, this situation. So this um, case B perhaps has uh, been useful for engineers who actually you know, have a little bit of axial force and a little bit of slope, of course, in the rafter with this type of connection. So this second load case could be set up in the software, of course, very easily, but I'll focus on the one highlighted in pink today. And well, I'll set up this connection now. And the way you would do that when you open the software, you could, of course, open up a previous um, connection or start a new one like this. And if I select that, I'll simply get this page where I can pick from over 100 standard types of connections. So I've got beam to column connections, that's the class. And within that, I've got a number of different geometries, including of with hollow sections. And uh, the column could be continuous. I could have a beam on each side. The orientation of the column could vary, of course. And uh, within each of these, we're going to have a range of design options. And uh, we can then further select some parameters. So. For this bolted moment end plate, this particular connection would be quite sensible, actually. It would take us a long way to setting up, setting up our connection. Uh, but I won't uh, do that. I'll build it up more manually so that process can be seen. Uh, but just to illustrate, we can have beam to beam connections, uh, again, of all different types and uh, node connections that you would find in trusses, base plate type connections, and uh, uh, more complex connections and even timber connections. And at the bottom here, we have essentially a blank uh, connection. So there's no members or plates or loads in that. Uh, so um, uh, what I'll do is select uh, this uh, basic connection type, but rather than using an end plate, I'll just use a, a blank connection template like this. And here we have it. It's defaulted to certain sizes. That's not important. We'll change those in a moment. We can see on the bottom left, uh, we have set this to the Australian standard. That is set on the previous page. And from here, it's a matter of setting up your connection details, of course. What we can see is that the member C, the column, is the bearing member. If you want to change that in your model, right click on a different member and set bearing, but I'm happy for the column to be the bearing member. And what that means is that loads that are applied to other members or any unresolved, unbalanced loads that are present in this connection model will find their way, or at least the member will attempt to convey those unbalanced forces or loads to the support here. So if you have a very unbalanced load arrangement, the column or the bearing member might well become overloaded and you'll see that in the results of course. Now there's a range of possibilities and orders of taking this forward. What I'll do is just select an 800 WB for this column. Right now because they're welded sections we don't have a standard library for that so I need to select a different type of cross section to the hot roll that's currently present. So I selected the plus symbol, I'll select the welded composed and select a standard I section here and enter the details. This is 816 deep, flange thickness is 28, the width is 300, and the web thickness is 10 millimeters. And it's not a hot roll grade 300. Uh, I want to add a grade to this connection model now, and this will be a plate grade 300 for a welded beam or a welded column, or it could be plate grade 400 like that. So I'm happy with that arrangement here. And the beam itself, that's already a universal beam. So I can edit that rather than select plus. And I'll pick a different universal beam. 
right now it's showing me all the libraries of, that have been included in the software around the world. I've clicked star for the Australian ones, so just a filter there. I'll go to the Australian UBs and pick the 610UB125, and I'm happy with that grade. I'll leave it like that. And that pitch, I'm going to make it zero, look from that direction, and I'm getting closer to setting up my connection model. There's a number of options, again, that we could proceed with. One is to right-click on a member, connect to, and then select the other member that I want to connect that member to and select from one of the options that come up. So this connection type, again, would take us very close to, in fact, what we want. But I won't do that. I'll show this other option, which is the new operation. And so many of the connection details have been created, uh, if you're doing it in this manual fashion, via this uh, operation uh, option in the ribbon, in the design ribbon. So here we can cut a member to something else, a plate or another member, add some stiffeners, wideners, ribs, openings in members, and so on, different types of connections and, and other details. It's worth trying these things out, looking at sample projects, looking at the templates and looking at the operations that have been used to set up different details. Also, the Ideostatica website discusses these things and um, shows them in uh, various webinars and so forth. But it's just a matter of trying these things out and getting used to it. So I, I want to select uh, the bolt size uh, and grade that I want to use here, grade 8.8 .8 M24. Interestingly, we've got grade 10.9 bolts in the software now. They have been included in AS4100 2020, and uh, they are now available in the software of a, a range of sizes. But I want the M24 8.8 .8 in this case. And that doesn't look particularly sensible, uh, but it's simply that it's defaulted to the end plate being attached to the other member in this model. So it's simply a case of I want to specify the end plate is connected to member B, and it's also related to or connected to the column C. So that's taken me a bit closer. I can extend this column. I can change the number of columns of bolts. Uh, there's a range of possibilities. So I could proceed with that. I'll show you in the settings that in the, the in the pre-design setting area, we can specify a percentage of the member capacity. So if you want to pre-design to a shear connection, uh, it will use uh, this percentage uh, to try to come up with a shear connection that will satisfy that level of loading compared to the incoming member. And similarly for a moment type connection, like an end plate, if you put in 50 or 60 percent, it will try to come up with a connection that uh, satisfies that capacity. So I'll put 50 percent there and save that. And on this end plate operation, I'll select pre-design and uh, that's a shear connection. This is a flush end plate, which we currently have. I want to select an extended end plate. And that gives me a connection that's much closer to uh, what I'm looking for. An alternative could have been just to have changed the details here like this. But I'll stick with that for now and then uh, make a few adjustments. Now, the column I want to extend upwards. We can see with the wireframe view where uh, the node is, the center line of the incoming members. I don't want to use an EX offset in this software as far as possible. It can have implications for the loading. It can effectively longitudinally shift the loading on the incoming member. It wouldn't apply to the column, but if I did that to a beam with loading on it, in most cases, there's a, a longitudinal shift. And so it may change the loading compared to what you want. So uh, a better way is to use cut operations. We can cut members shorter, we can cut members longer. So what I'll do is select that cut operation and cut member C. And uh, currently it's cutting it to the closer face. I want to cut it to the farther face like that, and then even extend it a bit further like this. So uh, that's uh, about right. The cut currently is with respect to B. So if I change the slope of B, say that was five degrees like that, we see the cut 
that cut operation is parallel, it means to the member I'm cutting it to. I could have selected perpendicular here, which means C is now still performing a cut to that distance, but it's a perpendicular cut to C. So just a couple of options there. And I'll leave it as parallel and take that uh, slope out for the rafter. I also want to put in a couple of stiffeners here. So easily done with the stiffener operation. And it's guessed uh, correctly this time in terms of where the stiffeners are to be, but I want to change a few details. So sure, the stiffeners are on member C related to B, which means if I change the position or the size of B, the stiffeners will change accordingly to line up with the flanges. I want to have a different grade. I want to use plate grade 250 for the stiffeners like that. And uh, just while, I, well, I'll, I'll do that for the end plate as well, change it to a uh, the, the appropriate plate grade. Just while I'm on the stiffeners, I'll make them 16 millimeter thick. Location, you can have them top and bottom, each side of the web or uh, one side or the other or both. It's up to you. There's a range of options. We've got position, upper, lower, center, or both. I do want to use and both sides. And we can further change the position if we like and the inclination of those stiffness if uh, we want a different slope or to make them horizontal if the default is sloping to a sloping in incoming member. Now, the width. Uh, often in the software, we have a default value used if the if a zero is used and we see that in the pop-up message and in that case it's to the full width of the column that it's stiffening but I want to specify an actual width of the stiffener in this case so it's 100 millimeters wide that can of course be changed accordingly if it doesn't look like it's uh, doing a good enough job and in terms of these other details they're pretty right I could chamfer the corners in there if I wanted to uh, specify the dimension of that uh, such as uh, 15 millimeters we see that there to clear any weld make it a little bit smaller that's fine and we can specify the welds to the stiffeners here and I'll make that eight millimeters like that all right so we're getting a bit closer uh, I'll now go back to the end plate and change a few details here. Okay, so that plate, I want to be 25 millimeters thick to correspond to the published tables. And I want to have it two profile symmetrical, which means uh, I enter distances such as this distance from the top of the top flange upwards to the top edge of the end plate. And I want that to be 65 plus 40 that'll be 105 millimeters and that will be applied at the bottom as well so simply symmetrical top and bottom left and right and the left dimension 10.5 so that means the plate is sticking out 10.5 millimeters from the edge of the beam so 229 wide flange plus another 21 that gives me a 250 wide plate corresponding to the published tables. Okay, so now this material, just getting that right, plate grade 250, and I don't want a backing plate in this case or a notch. I do want M24 grade 8.8 .8 bolts. And in terms of the positions, uh, currently that bolt is 60 millimeters up. I want that to be 65, like that. And uh, in terms of the next bolt down, there's a range of ways of doing it. Uh, I'll specify without a semicolon. It means the position will be relative to this first bolt, minus 149.6. And that's 2 times 65, that's 130, plus a further 19.6, that's the flange thickness. So that now gives me, as per the table, 65 millimetres up and 65 millimetres down. Uh, from the, the flange itself, and it's the same on the bottom as well. And in terms of horizontal position, uh, I want the bolts not to be 50 in from the side, but uh, 29.5 millimetres 
in from the sides and that gives me a gauge across the, the web there or a horizontal gauge of 170 millimetres as per the published tables. What I want to do now is add some wideness and uh, I want to set them up to be on member B and then uh, not related to C, that's getting closer but they're trying to weld to the column. I want to set those to be welded to a plate item and you might have to pick from a range of plate items but EP1 is correct. And by the way, if I hover over any item, I see on the bottom left what that item is. So that's a 610UB125, certain grade, the web thickness, the flange thickness, the column, the stiffener, the bolt, M24 8.8, the weld details and so on. So if you're wondering what item to uh, select to, a handy way is to not necessarily select it, but just hover over an item and you can see the name of it on the bottom left. So this is fine. I want the wideness to be connected to end plate EP1. I want the stiffener grade to be 250, the thickness to be 16 millimetres, cross section parts to the webs, both top and bottom. Uh, the width is 105 millimetres. Uh, that's the height there. And the length is, uh, or the depth is 175 millimetres. And I don't want them to be exactly triangular. I, I'm going to select rectangular here. And uh, in terms of welding, I actually want a butt weld on the, the vertical edge and a fillet weld here. So uh, to achieve that, I need to first of all, turn off the welds on this, uh, on, on these um, stiffeners like this. Now to achieve the the bevel or the cut of the corner, I for a plate, go into the editor, select the plate, select editor of that plate, widener in, in this case. And now we have a range of options of roundings and uh, uh, offsets and uh, penetrations and, and so forth. What I want to do is uh, select a bevel and I want to make it uh, 150 millimetres long like that by 80 millimetres deep and I want to make that uh, onto corner two or edge two so corner two in this case so if I move my model uh, away a little bit I can select apply like that so without closing this dialog box I can see if that actually makes sense and I'm happy with that so I'll OK. If you simply OK, that will apply the details, but uh, close that dialog box. So selecting apply is quite useful. Now I need to create some welds to these stiffeners. And this is the sort of thing that you might do when you need to do some custom details like this. The standard widener or stiffener operation gives you a weld to use. It, that, that weld is used throughout or on all sides. Here I'm going to add some welds and it's a matter of specifying is it edge to edge or edge to surface. And in this case I do want edge to surface. It's a weld. Contact is the other option there and I want it to be for widener 1A. So we're on the plate icon, widener 1A. Now we need to get to the right edge index and this transparent view is very good for this sort of thing. So uh, for the fillet weld, I'm going to use edge index five like that. And what's it going to be connected to? I can uh, select it from the drop down list. Uh, currently it's the bottom flange and we see the weld indicator trying to go all the way down there. Uh, or we can use the pick tool and uh, select the item that I want it to go to. So it's putting in the correct uh, option there. So member B, top flange one. And we see the indicator, uh, this yellow rectangle joining the mid thicknesses of plates uh, that are welded, whether they be fillet welded or butt weld uh, connections. And in this case, I want to have a uh, eight millimeter, no, it's a six millimeter fillet weld from the standard tables. Okay, so 
uh, that's fine. I'll go back to the solid view and we see here the six millimeter leg fillet weld. And I also need to do that on the bottom. A very handy option in Ideostatica is right click on an operation and copy. That gives you a new operation. Uh, time to change some details though. That's widener 1B. And uh, make sure I've got the right uh, flange that it's connecting to. And we see again, it's trying to just connect to the other flange because it retains the previous detail. It's going to be the bottom flange. So it's edge, edge index five of that widener. So uh, again, a six millimeter leg fillet weld. I'm happy with that. All right. The, the other details that we need to add uh, is the, the, the butt weld to the vertical edge. And I also want to make this a butt weld. So while I'm there, I'll just uh, make the, um, the flanges a butt weld and the, the web actually is going to be an eight millimeter fillet weld. So that fixes up the top and the bottom butt weld and also the web weld on from the beam to the end plate. All right, so the weld, I can copy it again, copy one of these operations. And so this is widener 1A, transparent view, edge index one. And I want to connect that to EP1. So select plate item, select the pick tool, select that, and it gives me the item that I want there. And this is going to be a butt weld like that. And I'll copy that operation, uh, do it at the bottom. And so it's widener 1B. It's again to the end plate with a butt weld. So I'm happy with that. So we still see those little yellow indicators indicating the connection of welds. That's a very handy view for all of these welds in the connection to make sure uh, you actually have a, a correct setup with uh, your details. So things look pretty right to me at this stage in terms of the simulation of the Steel Institute tables. I need to put some loads on. So I'll go to the loading option here in the 3D uh, window. Uh, if I need more load combinations, right click copy or add new load here. But uh, I want to add a major axis moment of 717 kilonewton meters. Turn on local coordinate system, major axis 717. There, like that. And I want to put a downward shear in VZ minus 399. So in this view, it, it illustrates the, the entered forces as being applied in a sense at the end of these members. But it isn't exactly done that way. Uh, the, the way to look at it is as follows. Let's go to the wireframe view and the view from the side elevation. And we can see that, that we have these uh, center lines, this wireframe view. And it, like this, we actually see the more correct depiction of the design actions in this connection. So this corresponds to the 3D analysis model. And so typically what you'll have is member end forces applicable at a node. When you bring those connections in using the BIM links to Ideostatica, everything will be set up to either node or, or position zero, same thing. I'll go into that in a moment. Or you know we can set these things up manually with a similar situation. All right, so uh, in the wireframe view, select the load case of interest or load combination of interest and select the member of interest. You might have many members coming in and you can look at the bending moment diagram on each of them. And what we see here is a varying bending moment. So actually what the software does in all cases is apply loads to the outward or the far extremities of the members compared to the node. And so it will apply downward force there of 399 kilonewtons. So that's, that's the shear that we have in this connection. And it's going to apply a relatively small hogging moment such that the bending moment diagram increases. The slope of the moment diagram, of course, is equal to the shear. And uh, we're going to have the correct design actions at the nominated location. So for B, we've set this to be forces in at the node. So that means the entered loading on B will be present as design actions at the node. Uh, but 
in all cases, the actual loads applied in the analysis are to these outer extremities. So that's important to recognize. So what this means is that I will actually have 554 kilonewton meters at the face of the column here. And I could have just as easily set this up to be a position of 408, that's half the column depth like this. Uh, so B is now set to be a position 408 millimeters along B from the node along B in the positive direction. And the loading now, if we look at it, well, it's too high. Uh, but if I specify the actual design moment I want at the face of the column, we see now we have an equivalent situation to what I had initially. Still 717 kilonewton meters at the node and 554 kilonewton meters at the face of the column. So perhaps I'll uh, just run with that. I could change it back, of course, but I'll just run with that. So when you're happy with the geometry that you've set up, the loading that you've set up, the appropriate bearing member and so on, uh, it's time to run the analysis. And we're going to work exclusively with elastic plastic stress strain analysis today. You can do a stiffness analysis, uh, some other types, um, which I don't tend to use that much. Capacity is designed if you're in the seismically active region and you have a plastic hinge that you expect to form in a seismic event, you can do a capacity design. Uh, and here we have a fatigue analysis, which can give you normal and shear stresses um, adjacent to welds or uh, any other cross section or uh, your stress ranges in bolts, for example. And you might set your loading to be serviceability or, or cycling load for uh, a fatigue analysis. So here we're going to run a ultimate limit state strength check. That's what this, this loading is, and it's an EPS analysis. So we can simply select calculate. And depending on how many um, load combinations you have, the complexity of the connection uh, and th these sorts of details, and perhaps how hard it's working as well. The software will work for you know, a certain amount of time to come up with the results. And here we have a result that is nearly working. It's um, a tiny bit, um, I guess, uh, away from working. And I entered six millimeters there. If I go back to my uh, PowerPoint presentation, yes, uh, just to check that, it uh, is a six millimeter leg there and an eight millimeter to the end plate, so that's fine. Uh, but maybe I need to increase that uh, a little bit uh, to eight there. And I will just, to keep it symmetrical, do it to the top as well and run that. So it was only fractionally exceeding the limit. I'll just bump that up a little bit. And everything is working now. I haven't run the buckling analysis, which I will do. And what we get after running the analysis is this traffic light type colored view. So depending on how hard things are working. So this far flange is gray. So too are a few welds. Uh, they're working um, no harder than 60%. From 60 to 95%, it's green. 95 to 100%, the item is orange. And above 100%, it's red, as we saw a minute or so ago. And we don't just stop there. We generally would have a, a very close look at the behavior and what's happening in this connection. So we select the check menu. And the, there's a range of options here, of course. The equivalent stress is the von Meyer stress. Uh, we'll select the mesh and the deformed geometry as well. And uh, bolt, uh, bolt forces as well. And I'll uh, reduce this down to uh, a deformed geometry of just five. Uh, so a scale of five. And uh, we can see here in this view the stresses. So these are the von Meyer stresses and a deformed uh, displacement, uh, deformed geometry of the connection under load. And uh, we could select different load cases if we had them in this table to see those various views. I'm, I've only run one, of course, uh, at this point. And this is very useful, uh, I believe, for getting a good feel. Uh, you know, looking at the, the, the stresses and then the plastic strains as well, 
there's a bit of plastic strain in the end plate and in the stiffener here a little bit around that bolt hole and in the weld here by looking at these different views along with the deformed geometry and the bolt forces we get a very good appreciation of how these forces are flowing through the connection uh, what's struggling and perhaps what has a bit extra up its sleeve so where welds are not working very hard you might reduce them for example um, and uh, you know things are really not working at all very well back in the column we might have to add a doubler to the web plate uh, or a, um, a diagonal stiffener uh, or something like that so uh, you know with examination of the results you get a very good idea of how to optimize the connection make it work or in fact improve the economy okay and um, a really nice thing about uh, the check menu is uh, you can select on anything to see some further results so for example uh, the plastic strain we're up to 0.8 percent somewhere in this connection uh, i'll select that end plate and it takes me to the right tab in the results i've got to be on the check menu and it highlights the appropriate row and uh, this item has a plastic strain of 0.8 percent it's less than the upper limit default of five percent that's the upper limit to plastic strain and uh, so it, it's working so everything is, is ticked here in terms of design checks and i could select other plates such as this stiffener down here i get a view of it here the plastic strain you can compare to the uh, the chart here and see the result uh, in the table again it's 0.8 percent so it's got uh, a von my stress of 226.6 megapascals plastic strain of 0.8 percent the governing load combination is listed here i've only run for one uh, as i say and we could examine uh, results for individual load cases if we select for current here and then select the appropriate load combination so that's uh, plates i can select any other item such as uh, a bolt like this it'll take me to the bolt column take me to the appropriate bolt row and here uh, this is interesting i think uh, the design tension capacity of m24 8.8 .8 bolts is 234 kilonewtons so we're under that that's fine there's a slight difference between the tension here versus here so that's what we see in this software that it doesn't use empirical rules to suggest that all of these bolts should have the same tension depends on the thickness of the plates whether this is stiffened or not and a range of other details the thickness and width of the supporting column and so on as to what the bolt tensions will be and uh, these bolt forces will in fact be influenced by prying and uh, we can see if we select contact stress a little bit of stress at the corners there uh, so there's, there wouldn't be much prying to the outer bolts and there would be no prying to these bolts but uh, those prying effects are included directly in the bolt tension there's no separate factor to include uh, and uh, these bolt forces are used for the tension and shear checks uh, according to the code so with uh, these bolts selected we can hover over this view and see the tensions and the shears we can also see those results in the table and uh, here we have the the various checks so for b2 213.8 kilonewtons it is carrying a little bit of shear again most shear is taken by the bolts around the compression flange but there is some shear taken by these bolts that are in tension all checked design bearing capacity of the bolts through the plates utilization percentage in tension and in, in shear and in tension and shear interaction and we can select this plus symbol to see further details uh, we can scroll through here or it's easier to right click print preview and see this in a, a better view just maximize that okay so now we see the code checks so tension resistance to this clause of the code uh, design tension capacity 234.4 as mentioned 
uh, greater than design tension force and so on for shear for various interfaces if it's going through multiple interfaces uh, with more than two plates bearing resistance of the plates that it's going through the squared relationship the interaction of tension and shear so we can examine those things in detail and so too with the welds i'll go back to the overall check and we can see that some welds are still working uh, fairly hard so i can select on that weld and it will take me to the weld table and highlight that weld. It's down there. I have the governing, well, I have the various details of the leg length, the throat thickness, the governing load combination, design shear flow, design shear capacity, utilization percentage. And here it, here it is for this particular weld that I selected. You can also see where it is in this view and the equivalent stress across the throat in, in this view here. And uh, we can also look at the plastic strain in this view. It's not given in this table, but it, you can align it to the table here. So again, we could uh, open this up to see the clause reference code checks for welds and so too for anchors and concrete blocks and so forth. So uh, you might also want to uh, change some things up a bit uh, using the overall check take a few screenshots put them on the second screen if you like and uh, then come in and uh, try to make some further optimization so for example I might want to re try a thinner end plate here as soon as I change anything I of course lose my results that's fine and I might want to try a, a smaller weld there like that and uh, you rerun it uh, but this time what i'm going to do is run the buckling analysis so from the check menu use the drop down we're going to do the elastic plastic stress strain analysis and buckling this time so it takes just a little bit longer but not much everything that we've assessed or discussed so far in this connection assumes no potential for buckling so we need to run a buckling analysis to make an assessment of the buckling modes and the buckling load factors and uh, this is how we take care of slenderness uh, of uh, uh, stiffeners or webs and uh, elements of this connection so i reduce the end plate thickness and uh, it's not working i'll select on that from the check menu the plastic strain is too high 12.7 percent it's higher than the upper limit of five so steel has an elongation or ductility capacity of about 20% plus or minus 5% depending on grade and, and type and thickness and so on. So 5% is quite low to the ductility capacity, um, except perhaps for some very high strength cold rolled steel like such as purlins. And in that case, you wouldn't uh, want to uh, have much uh, plastic strain apart from maybe very locally around bolt holes. Uh, so if you're using that type of steel, perhaps cut this limit back. You can do that in code setup. But 12.7% uh, is, of course, above this limit, and we can see the extra deformations and the high plastic strain in the end plate. It's, it's too thin, of course. And in terms of bolt forces, I only changed the end pl plate thickness there and uh, a weld size, and now my bolt forces have gone up quite a lot and they're failing and we can see those details uh, here and we can get a sense of why that's happening uh, by looking at the contact stresses and so there's a lot more reverse curvature of the plate a lot more prying action and of course an amplification or an increase to the bolt tensions and a little bit down here as well so the, the bolt tension goes up um, and is uh, roughly on the limit there or a touch over the limit. So hence the bolts fail. So we would make the end plate thicker, of course. And in terms of the overall check, this weld that I tried to make smaller is failing as well. So you could change from butt welds to fillet welds, different sizes, try these things out, come up with some uh, practical uh, optimums in terms of uh, cost and uh, uh, you know, standardization and, and these sorts of things. But I've run the buckling analysis, so let's have a look at the results from the check menu, buckling shape, buckling uh, tab over here. And we can select the different modes in the table. And 
The Idea Statica website discusses this in quite a bit of detail. What we want to have is a buckling load factor of at least three within a connection for modes of buckling within a connection like this, this shear panel or stiffeners or something like that. There's a different type of mode. It could be an incoming compression brace connected by a gusset. And if that member could sway, well, then we want to have a much higher buckling load factor for those relevant modes. 15 is what you're looking for there. So there's uh, quite a bit of information on the Idea Statica website. We'll get in touch with, uh, with us at Building Point for further clarification if required. So in this case, the lowest buckling load factor is above three and slenderness is fine. I don't need to stiffen this web panel uh, due to buckling or slenderness considerations. So right now, so, some things are failing. I would, of course, uh, bump those uh, details up to uh, what um, I had earlier, uh, such that everything was working. When you do that, rerun the analysis, you could go to the report, and this will give you your various inputs and your results. And it's a, and this report can be printed to Word or PDF or uh, uh, a range of things. So we have our various inputs, our checks. The way I left it, it's not okay for a, a range of details. And we see some nice uh, illustrations of the software and, uh, as I say, the various checks. If you want to get more detail of the critical expressions, the critical items, select this icon here and refresh like that. Or the next one across actually gives you the, your clause reference code checks for all of the checks all of for example all the bolts and all the welds and so on so the reports a little bit longer now but we get these detailed results for the critical items that's what i selected there so there's a range of options in uh, the report that you have and uh, in terms of i guess outputting from this software uh, there's a range of options um, in addition to the bill of materials uh, perhaps i'll do that uh, bill of materials that we can select in this view or I'll just select a summary bill of materials here. So it's not quite a shop drawing but we have dimensioned sections and views of the various items but what you can also do is take this entire connection file into the online viewer and uh, uh, the detailer or the Tecla structures modeler for example could use that uh, facility to examine the connection in more detail or from that viewer you can create a 3D DWG file which uh, can be imported into other uh, applications. So just to wrap things up we've had a good look at uh, this uh, the modeling of this connection the application of load assessing the results and so on uh, looking at making some changes uh, how was all of this done? How was this software developed such that we can just enter the geometry? I didn't have to worry about mesh size, creating contacts between bolted items or, and uh, boundary conditions at welds and so forth. How was all of this done? Well, it's because it's a dedicated connection tool using finite element analysis. The software model was developed using teams of software engineers and so on. This started with the imagining of a software tool to analyze and code check essentially all steel connections of general geometry. Hence, they embarked on this uh, very rigorous program. And it was validated using extensive tests, uh, full-scale testing, uh, research finite element models. For example, here we have bolts and welds actually meshed in the research FE analysis compared to the simplified model that is used in Idea Statica. Classic T-stub test, depending on various details, you'll have a certain behavior of the contacts and the prying and the bolt forces, of course, uh, developing as the load is uh, increased. Similarly, for base plate and foundation type connections, very detailed in uh, terms of the various studies and uh, assessments made. Just some more photos here of um, contact stresses and locations in a uh, end plate connection of a rectangular section, haunches or stiffeners, gussets, uh, predicted behavior, real world behavior here. All of these details were summarized 
uh, included in research papers published on the Idea Statica website and in uh, other publications. But all of that was done and included in the software, all of these details, these automations, which meant that when you set up geometry and set the analysis going, a lot of automatic things happened. So for bolts, there's a bilinear uh, simulation of the nonlinear behavior of the bolt, you know, force versus deformation. Mesh is automated in terms of size and validated extensively. Surface cuts could be straight cuts such as the, the beam to the end plate or it could be more complex cuts like this and you can nominate the weld at that interface very easily. Nothing further to do. And the contacts, the boundary conditions between bolted plates is automatic. In other cases, you might set up a contact. Very simple to do as well. But in most cases, it's automatic. For welds, I set up some custom welds to these stiffeners. Others, you just nominate the weld size on a standard stiffener or a widener type uh, uh, item. No need to worry about the nodes lining up in the mesh between the different plates. There's a interpolation and uh, automatic uh, multi-point constraint that's developed, which leads to an equivalent weld shell element item simulating the weld it has an elastic plastic uh, performance and the forces arising the shear flows arising in those welds uh, validate and correspond very accurately to full-scale testing so uh, uh, you know there's nothing further to do you set up the welds and then you can assess the results uh, so again very convenient and the steel material itself elastic plastic like this and so uh, we have a degree of plastic redistribution and there is a limit applied to plastic strain. That's the heart of the modelling process. And in terms of design checks for plates, it comes down to ensuring the plastic strain isn't above uh, 5%. That value is suggested in the Eurocode. It corresponded very nicely to the validation and testing work. So it has been used as a default for all other codes around the world in this software and in terms of slenderness as mentioned you carry out a buckling analysis and ensure the buckling load factor is high enough for relevant modes so buckling within a connection make sure it's at least three if it's an incoming compression member connected by perhaps a bolted gusset arrangement if that member could sway make sure your buckling load factor is at least 15. so they're the two cases to uh, be aware of and to watch out for. In terms of other items, bolts, welds, anchors and so on, we get clause reference code checks in the software as illustrated. And for hollow sections, SIDECT in Europe has another check, uh, which is the face deformation for a truss type connection. So if you have a hollow section as a bearing member and incoming uh, other members, you get a local deformation check and it's 3% uh, for a strength limit state and um, the connection that I ran here was okay, of course. So that's there's quite a range of checks that are available in the software. So just to summarize the capability, stress and strain analysis, design checks to the desired code, buckling analysis. I didn't talk about it much before, you can set it going to a stiffness analysis and you'll get the, uh, for example, in moment, uh, the moment rotation behavior of the connection and uh, your initial stiffness and your capacity and other details are provided. So people use this uh, for, for example, for the um, stiffness of an, uh, essentially a, um, a pin-based column in a portal frame. It might be a reasonably substantial connection but for strength assumed to be uh, simply supported or a pin connection, but for lateral deflection control, perhaps some rigidity is assumed. And this software has been used in a number of cases for that that I'm aware of. For seismic situations, you could undergo uh, a, a capacity design where the uh, strain hardening and the material, the over strength factors are included in the uh, dissipative item that's nominated. And that means that higher loading can be applied to the remainder of the connection. So we need to make sure we have ductile behavior in this, that situation. We can set it to a fatigue analysis. So 
These blue shaded planes represent the various cross sections where normal and shear stress results are provided in such an analysis and you can uh, nominate other sections as well and you get those results for bolts also. And we can have steel to concrete connections and there's other options. We can have timber connections connected by uh, simple gusset type plates and steel bolts and we can even do entire members or frames using this first principle type of approach that's uh, been developed in Idea Statica. So it was a lengthy presentation. Thank you for staying with me uh, to this point. If you have any further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us via our uh, website at Building Point or phoning 1800 900 272 or emailing us at uh, our Tecla support hotline. Thank you very much.